All right, folks, welcome to Fitness for 55 Plus podcast brought to you by Strong Life. My name is Dr. Dustin Jones. Dr. Jeff Musgrave, Doctor of Physical Therapy. Good morning, sir. All right, so we are going live into our Fitness for 55 Plus uh, Facebook group. This is where we field questions from uh, you all that want to know how to reach your goals, how to navigate you know, all of life's challenges, injuries, diagnoses, just to become you know, your, your healthiest and fittest self. So we have on deck probably one of our favorite topics yeah. is it our perspective on this is typically different than what you're going to find in most healthcare fitness realm. So Nancy North, thank you, Nancy, for asking this question. Can you help with what exercises and anything else we can do for women? And we'll just say men as well, uh, who have been diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis in their hips to strengthen bones and get them healthy again. So let's, do this. We'll start off with talking about what is that diagnosis, what it means, and then Jeff will hit on um, some of the exercises and practical things we can do. So this uh, this term, osteopenia and osteoporosis, um, is referencing bone mineral density. So what typically happens is um, folks will start to look at their bone mineral density via a DEXA scan. And this scan looks at a lot of things, but it can look at how dense or strong your, your bones are. And so it'll do this DEXA scan and look in, in basically three main areas are the, the of most interest for most um, physicians. And that's the uh, neck of the femur on the right side, neck of the femur on the left side, and then the lumbar spine. You will also, um, in certain situations, they may look at the wrist, um, the thoracic spine as well, but typically kind of the standard DEXA scan is going to look at those neck of the femur, aka hip, and then the, the low back. And so they take the picture of those areas and they will give you a T score. And this T score, based on that, will determine if you get that diagnosis. So zero to negative, um, <clears throat> sorry, zero to negative 2.5 is going to be in that kind of osteopenic range. And then below negative 2.5 is going to be osteoporosis. And so what you will see is you, you'll get that DEXA scan and then you may get that diagnosis, um, but you may not get a lot of context. What does that actually mean? And what is most confusing for folks is you'll get that full DEXA scan and you may be completely fine in the right hip, the left hip, and then you have maybe osteoporosis or below that negative 2.5 in your lumbar spine mm -hmm. and you get that diagnosis, but no one ever told you that it's just in this particular area, that a lot of other areas are, are just okay. So that is osteopenia osteoporosis. And what we see um, at Stronger Life is we have a lot of folks that will come in with this diagnosis. And it is not uncommon at this point for people to build their bone mineral density to shift to maybe a different category. So if someone was osteoporotic, they may shift to become osteopenic, which is a big improvement, or osteopenic to normal. Those are huge wins. And, and that is not necessarily uncommon. So there's a lot we can do about this. This is not a death sentence. Um, there's a lot that you can do on a day in and day, day in and day out basis that is going to influence these numbers. All right. Anything else on that in terms of? No, I think that's a great process? summary. I mean, even when we went to school, we were taught initially that after 30, it's just withdrawals from the bone bank that you just yeah. lose bone density and that's just how it goes. But the reality is the research that has been done has shown that you can improve your bone mineral density if you do the right type of training. Yeah. Um, and that's something that is a really important part of what we do here at Stronger Life. Yeah. The if. That's that's the big part. So, so Nancy, for example, I, I can only imagine that she's probably put on maybe some type of medication um, that will kind of encourage the, the growth of that bone mineral density. These medications can be useful in a short-term period, they're not as effective when they're used over a longer period of time. Um, so, so they're not <clears throat> the magic cure or magic pill for um, for sure, but they can help. They do have some of them have a lot of side effects, um, but there's a one piece that you have to do regularly that's really going to move the needle. And so, Jeff, when we think about exercises and what in particular we should be doing. What would you say to someone like, like Nancy? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing you have to do is resistance training. So the reality is the bone is living, breathing tissue, 
and it responds to stress. It responds to load. So unfortunately, a lot of the recommendations are, oh, your bones are becoming a little bit less dense, so let's get you in an aquatic program. And an aquatic yeah. program is going to do the opposite of what the bones need. Instead of adding more load to stimulate the bones to get stronger, we're going to reduce weight bearing on the bones and make mm -hmm. the bones weaker. Yeah. So it it's meant to be um, protective in nature. You know, physicians aren't encouraging that to try to harm people. They're mm -hmm. trying to protect them. But that overprotection and that lack of resistance and that lack of load is going to make the bones weaker. Mm -hmm. Same thing with seated exercise programs. For example, they say, oh, do a seated program. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're trying to weight bear through your femurs, through your legs, and you're sitting on your butt, you're not going to load your body <laughs> with even body weight. It ain't gonna and happen. that's going to make you worse. Yeah. So you need standing exercises and you need to slowly and progressively add load, add weight. Mm -hmm. So these big functional movements like step-ups, like squats, a.k.a. standing up and sitting down from a chair with additional load beyond body weight, mm -hmm. um, carrying loads, um, and picking up weight off the ground or from an elevated surface. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be body weight plus. If you're standing and walking around independently and your bones are continuing to get weaker, yeah. Just doing bodyweight exercises aren't going to get it done. Mm -hmm. So the big category is resistance training, bodyweight plus. Yeah. We've got to get to bodyweight plus. We need to move well, and we need to have progressive overload. As we are moving well and we get stronger, we need to add more and more resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's, it takes months, months of consistency to make that change. It's not something that's going to happen quickly. But if you get on a dedicated program, like Dustin said, and we've seen people change their T-scores by a whole T-score. Yeah. Like from osteoporosis to osteopenia. Mm -hmm. And that person is not lifting like two, 300 pounds to do that. Right. I mean, it's going from like, I don't lift any weight to mm -hmm. I lift a little bit of weight and a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's like up to 20 or 30 pounds for that specific individual was enough. But that was, you know, from zero load up to 20, 30, 40 pounds. That's a huge jump. Mm -hmm. Just doing that consistently was really helpful. So resistance training is huge. The other piece would be some type of impact or jump training. Mm -hmm. Those are the two big categories. And those need that jump training needs to be progressive in nature too. Um, but, but having um, low volume of like smack landings where you're coming up on your tiptoes and you're dropping your heels Mm -hmm. um, things like that where we're getting impact or doing some type of jump training. So resistance training, huge, yeah. huge, very strongly supported in the research. And then some type of jump training, okay. even starting with like arm support and doing some heel drops. Um, I think mm -hmm. we've done some good like content yeah. pieces on that too. Yeah. In the, in the show notes, um, in the <clears> Facebook <throat> group, I'll, I'll drop these links for you, Nancy. And then if you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, we'll drop the links in the description. Because um, we've got lots of videos, lots of ways to, to progress it. Um, because that, that's the big key that Jeff mentioned is starting at an approachable level of these e exercises, but not staying there and continually yeah. making it more, more challenging. Um, that, that's the, the ticket. So how often would you do these? Like how often are you really focused on resistance training? How often per, per week are you trying to do impact training? What would you recommend? Yeah, I mean at least a minimum of twice a week for resistance training, impact training once or twice a week. So if you got four sessions um, with some rest days in there, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be really strong towards stimulating those bones to get stronger. Yeah. <clears throat> and a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of our folks here at Stronger Life, they'll start off coming two to three times per week. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, as they progress, as they get fitter, they're, their need for rest reduces. And then we have folks that start to come four or five days a week. Um, but that is not the recommendation out the gate. You got to earn yeah. <laughs> the ability to, to do more. Um, but yeah, that two times a week. And that's really reflected in a lot of the research when you look at um, osteoporosis and resistance training. Um, they're, they're trying to find that sweet spot, kind of that, that minimal dosage to see impact. And you're seeing a lot of two times a week programs um, that are using a relatively high or heavy 
um, resistance. And so, so that seems to be kind of the key to really seeing those changes. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty solid. I think that'd be a good place to start, Nancy. Um, this, is, and like Jeff said, this is not a kind of one and done thing. This is something that needs to be done continuously for the rest of your life. Like it's like brushing your teeth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Cause you, um, just like everything with our bodies, if you don't use it, you lose it. And the same for our bone mineral density. If we're not consistently challenging our bones, they will get weaker. And so we have to continually do that. Um, anything else you want to add? In that I was category? just going to say, if you're, if you're starting this new, know that like, if you're looking for change, expect like eight to 12 months of consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just like you said, I mean, it's a lifelong practice. As soon as you stop loading your bones, they're going to start to become less dense and they're going to become weaker. So it's got to be a lifelong practice. Yeah. It's got to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> if it can be fun, even better. Yeah. If it can be with friends, even better. Mm -hmm. um, you're more likely to stick to it if you've got friends you can do stuff with. Yeah. But um, two times a week minimum. In my, per in my like, if you could do four times a week, that would be awesome. But yeah, to your point, mm -hmm. two times a week is a minimum. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the, the time frame, that's a really good point because it... It's different than like your muscles, for example, like, like Nancy can join stronger life and she's going to notice improvements in strength, her endurance, her balance very quickly. Like we're talking a matter of weeks, but when you look at bones, they were, they take a little, a little bit longer to, to change. And so in an eight to 12 month period, you're going to see amazing results, get really strong. You're going to improve your balance and your endurance but it won't be till that kind of year mark, eight to 12 months that you'll start to see the change in the bones. That's, that's a good perspective there. So, yeah. all right. Thank you, Nancy, for asking that question. If you have a question um, related to an injury, a diagnosis, um, fitness, health, anything related, and you're over 55, we'd love for you all to hop in our Fitness for 55 Plus Facebook group. You can go to strongerlifehq.com and click the podcast uh, tab and it, you'll, you'll see a link to get in the Facebook group there. Or you can just search on Facebook for Fitness for 55 Plus by Stronger Life and it'll pop up. That's where we fill these questions. Um, and we're grateful for y'all, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Instagram, you're in the Facebook group, wherever you're at, we're grateful for y'all uh, tuning in and we will see y'all soon. See you next time. All right.